The history of the Beach Boys. One of the most popular surfing bands of the 1960s starts with the birth of Brian Wilson in June 1942, Dennis Wilson in December 1944, and Carl Wilson in December 1946, thereby laying the ground path of the Beach Boys. All three were two years apart from one another, younger to older, and they had a very controlling and abusive, musically talented, yes, but very abusive by trade, father named Mary Wilson. Mary never thought of his children as good, nor decent. He thought of them as trash, something in which without his influence would never make into anything. He made it clear to the boys that the only way they could make it in life was not by being on a construction site to make ends meet or standing grounds and making odd jobs to earn a few dollars. They would have to be musicians straight away. Dennis Wilson didn't really like his father's instructive attitudes and so he went out and became what many people called him as Dennis the Menace to which he would break cars and sometimes even throw things over fences. He was rogue. But it's more conservative two kids, Carl and Brian, were the ones that many considered to be the quiet, yet very, very instructive of their father's demands. Dennis was the only one who stood up to his father when being confronted and also put him in his place. As well as being the only beach boy who could stand up to his father if being abusive to him and his brothers, he was only the only beach boy that could also have a great time and get out there more. His brothers, Carl and Brian, were not so much. Brian was more the inner man, being quiet on certain things, and Carl was shy enough that he didn't want to get involved in all the tit-tat that was going on in the business. But Dennis was open for a good time and was certainly into women, due to his numerous images with them and also numerous flings over the next several years. The band wasn't fully formed until about 1959, in which Ryan, Dennis and Carl's cousin, Mike Love, started to also get in on what many would say, the action. In terms of the brothers, Brian and Carl were close to each other from the moment Carl was born in 1946. Brian didn't feel so much the same way about Dennis though, thinking he was more of the outer person, and he felt that Carl understood him because both of them had a similar shy personality and quiet demeanour. And it's kind of evident when you think of the fact that Carl always worried about Brian during his mental health days and just was there for him whenever he was down and low. Including when he had that drug overdose in 1982, Carl was reportedly by his side. So I always feel like them two had a closer bond. It was around 1960 when the band fully started to come together. The first four members were in place Brian Wilson, Dennis Wilson, Carl Wilson, and Mike Love. But there was a bit of a switcheroo between the years of 1961 and 1964, in which Al Jardine had briefly quit the band to study to be a teacher. So in place was David Marks, and that was supposed to be it. But David Marks had a bit of a falling out with the band, and so too did his family. What with Marks' mother being extremely cross with Audrey Wilson... And so Marx was let go in early 64 and they welcomed back Al Jardine and that was it. The Beach Boys were back in place. In 1964, the band had scored their first official US hit. There'd been minor successes, sure, but this US hit was I Get Around. And how popular was this song for a surfing generation? Very popular, because it had never have been achieved before. There were surfing like guitar riffs, but I don't think a band fully said, hey, we're a surfing group, more like the Beach Boys. That hit contributed what would later be involved in the Beach Boys book. Now, despite singing songs about surfing and how it's great to go to the beach, the band, bar their drummer Dennis Wilson, couldn't actually surf. Nor the brothers couldn't even surf. So the only Beach Boy who could surf didn't say much about it because he was playing the drums. 
Dennis Wilson played the drums for the first two albums that the Beach Boys released. It wouldn't be until around 1965 in which the band started to pay him more attention. Now, it was around this time that I Get Around was released in 64 where things began to take a turn. Brian had only a few weeks earlier met a girl whilst doing a concert called Phyllis after he accidentally spilt a drink on her. He did the concert and very soon they started dating. But it wasn't that long into the whole affair that he thought she might be cheating on him, which brought him immense anxiety. A week before that incident took place, Brian had warned his staff and his record company that he did not want to go on the tour out of fear that he would have an attack over, well, Phyllis cheating on him, even though she wasn't. Cut to a few weeks later, and Brian is on the plane, begging them to take him home because he feared that she might be flinging around when he's not there. And he has a massive panic attack on the plane en route to England. So after landing, the band decided that they'd have to get in a replacement, a future successful musician called Glenn Campbell, whilst Brian recovered. He then had to be brought back on a plane back to the United States, where he was met by his mother, Audrey. Following the absence of Brian, the England tour was succeeded by... Glenn Campbell, who would later go on to be a successful artist himself. After the England tour concluded, the band got to work on their most famous album as of yet, Pet Sounds. Made in 1966, this masterpiece took the band away from what was once a rock and roll surfing group into something that couldn't even be described anymore. The band had made it. This was inspired famously by Rubber Soul from the Beatles, Fun fact, the Beatles would later be inspired by Pet Sounds and would later make Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. List back and forth between the Beatles and the Beach Boys is pretty much synonymous. After the success of Pet Sounds, a very good album by the band as of yet, Brian told the group he no longer wanted to tour. He felt that it was stressful and that he would only end up having another panic attack. He told the band... And without question, tears were flowing. In particular, with Mike Love and Carl Wilson. Carl looking up to Brian and Mike looking up to Brian as well as the leading guided wing that held the Beach Boys, like glue. He told the band, though, he would stay on board with them as a sixth member to write songs for them. When the band were discussing who could take up Brian's wings in the touring band, they could only think of Carl Wilson. Because the other members weren't really keen on writing songs and Dennis saw up to be a liability, Carl was the only person who could really take the helm of his older brother. Because Carl looked up to Brian and Brian looked up to Carl, it was inevitable that if Carl couldn't do it, no one could. Coupled with the fact that the band had no problems with Carl whatsoever. So with that being said, Carl took Brian's place as the lead beach boy in the helm. Whilst before he was the back beach boy, just singing and playing a lead guitar, this time he was the guiding force. And between 1967 and 1971, Carl would remain that leading force, bringing the hits Still to the Beach Boys. Now whilst the band, musically, were doing swimmingly fine, the band personally was following dark roots. Brian Wilson was sinking slowly into madness, what with his mental and physical problems, weight and his madness in anxiety. And Dennis Wilson got into talks with a certain cult leader named Charles Manson, who I didn't mention in my previous video because I felt like mentioning him would be a bit of an issue but in this remaster I thought why not mention him as he's probably one of the most evilest people ever to walk the earth. Having said that you all know what Charles Manson would later do he would murder Sharon Tate and guests at her home leaving not only a grieving husband but a grieving fan base who loved her work. Dennis Wilson, as many pointed out, including Mike Love, reportedly never got over the guilt of bringing Charles Manson into his life 
and bringing him pretty much into the life of Sharon Tate, he felt sorry. By the 1970s, the band's success began to decline. This was because of Brian's mental health, Dennis's drug abuse, and Carl Wilson's issues. The albums and the sales began to fall off the grid, and even if they made songs during the days of heavy metal, disco, and more bigger rock and roll, it became clear the band's place in the music industry at that point was so low. However, by the 1980s, a brief re-emergence in the surfing craze would bring the band back up to speed with what was going on in that era. But it didn't last long, and by the 1980s, it was back to the way it used to be. The reason they re-emerged in the 80s was because of the Ramones, bringing a more Beach Boys feel to one of their albums at that point. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, do you see the Ramones as a surfing band? No, I don't. I mean, I don't see D.D. Ramon swinging on a surfboard by any means. But the band did help the Beach Boys out by giving their own songs a bit of a Beach Boys refreshment. Now, this was after their drummer Tommy Ramon had quit the group because of apparent bullying. But this was the reason why the Beach Boys came back into the public eye after the 70s decline. Now, after the brief wake-up call of the 1980s surfing craze, and after having a long period of alcohol and drug abuse while swimming in the shores of the Marina del Rey on the 30th of December 1983, Dennis Wilson died of drowning, the coroner ruling it death by misadventure. After Dennis's death, the band refused to disband, saying that because Dennis had died, it did not mean the band was necessarily over. They made one more hit as a five, Kokomo, which has gone down as both a good song, but a bad song at the same time, by critics and fans. On the 6th of February 1998, after battling brain and lung cancer, Carl Wilson succumbed to it, dying at the age of 51 from the cancer. In early 2024, Brian Wilson's second wife, who he'd married in 1996 and who helped him through his troubling times, passed away. It was not specified what she died of, but we do know she passed away and that Brian Wilson was reportedly saddened. Unfortunately, though, just a few weeks after, we were dealt another blow for the Beach Boys when we all found out that Brian Wilson now had dementia and that potentially he could be the next Beach Boy to leave us. It's not just the fact that he's the only brother left, but it's the fact he's the driving force. If we lose Brian Wilson, we've lost the Beach Boys. No question about it. I mean, we lost the Beach Boys when Carl Wilson died, but... The death of Brian Wilson will surely kill the Beach Boys. If not now, then very soon. Along with Brian, the other surviving members include Mike Love, Al Jardine and Bruce Johnston, who currently are the living members along with Brian of the band. And with that being said, that is the history of the Beach Boys. Thanks for being patient and welcoming of my return. Uh, this has been on a timer, like, you've had to wait a lot of months for this. But honestly, I don't think I've let you down in this one. I think I've got everything I, you know, took from in the internet or learned from other people's videos and brought you, I hope, a good video. But with that being said, uh, thanks for watching. If you did like it, uh, subscribe and like. If you didn't, then dislike and don't subscribe. And with that being said, thanks for watching. Um... New video coming out soon. I don't know what band it'll be, but I think it'll be one that you might like. So that being said, thanks for watching and goodbye.